I'm the doctor, Bob Lee. Welcome back, and uh, you're watching Open. Thanks for chilling, hanging out with us. Our next guest is a retired teacher carrying 50 years of experience between James Adams High School and James Monroe High School, and he is the founder of the Kindness Club at the Cate House, a senior living facility in the Bronx. And he joins us to speak about what inspired him to start his Kindness Club to highlight some of the activities that the club is involved with. So please welcome to the show, Tom Porton. Tom, welcome. Good morning, Bob. How are you? How are you? I want to see your movement. Yeah, I'm only well, messing with you. I know we got a picture of you there. Listen, Tom, I know. Um, you've been in the education business for some time now. Um, tell us a little bit how it all started for you and give us a little overview of you, about you. Well, actually, I, um, I studied education at NYU at the Heights. And um, during that time, when I was a sophomore, I went to see Sidney Poitier and to Sir With Love. Oh, wow. And I think that was a momentous moment in my education career because I decided after seeing that movie that that was the type of teacher I wanted to be. Yeah. A teacher who brought the class into the community and the community into the classroom. Yeah. So when I eventually started teaching in 1969, at James Monroe High School, I basically did as many community outreach programs as I could do. I did shows, I did street fairs, food festivals, concerts, all kinds of clubs. Uh, in those days, they also appointed me as something called the coordinator of student activities, ah. which was a field, was a, which was a, um, a job that had been created to be the ombudsman to stop racial tensions in the schools. So I started doing that in my school. Now, we, but, was this yes, in the 80s on. and 90s also? Oh, well, I'm going to get to that. No, because that I, I used to me, come around and visit yeah. the schools with, right. a, with a WBLS radio station van. And I remember that. You remember, remember that. that. That's I'm, why I'm saying it, because I remember I used to course. pull up there, and it was dark outside, and I would get there so there early. You go. And I would wait That's until you, right. everybody came to school. Yeah. Oh, oh believe me, well, you know uh, what? You... I remember you. Wow. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad because uh, I remember you too, Ben. I remember when you came to our school. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I put you guys on the radio. I think we did it from a, a telephone booth or, <laughs> or maybe Could from be. the... Yeah. <laughs> the good old days, the telephone booth. Yeah, I know. We used to carry a bag of uh, quarters and <laughs> put the money in, there you go. in a telephone booth. But sometimes the operator would come in and be, become a part of the broadcast. <laughs> oh, I know that. I know that. Yeah. But so, in any case, um, that took us basically to the early 90s. Yeah. And then in the early 90s, my career took a somewhat of a turn because I created something called Bronx Cre Youth Creating Compassion. Ah. which would become the longest-running student-run HIV program in the country. Excellent, excellent. It started out with students teaching other students in the classroom about safer behaviors. It then moved into the students creating things called friendship grams, which are letters to hospitalized, hospitalized AIDS patients, and baskets of love, which were toiletries for those patients mm -hmm. yeah then we saw that it wasn't enough so i piled a group of my students into my van and we used to set up on street corners around the city doing what was called the aids van and we brought with us a costume character called captain condom who would attract people over to the displays and we would teach young people and adults yeah. about safer behaviors. They said, what is going and on on the corner out here? And until they until got right. to where you were, then you would explain everything uh, that was happening that's around right. them. Yeah. And these but it was a great attention involved. getter, that's for sure. It, it really was. Yeah. And I have no doubts whatsoever that we were saving lives by doing it. Yes, yes. That's important. Because... Um, Many of those students who did this also went into healthcare fields, became doctors and nurses and researchers, so that what they learned in high school 
took them through the rest of their lives. Excellent. Tom, do they come back and visit you and let them know, let you know what they're into now? I have thousands of friends on Facebook, most of whom were my former students. Excellent. And um, the, the reality is that a number of those students got national and um, local awards. One, one of them was invited by Hillary Clinton to the White House when she was in the White House. Yeah. And I myself uh, was proud to be inducted into the National Teachers Hall of Fame in 1995. I actually was the first New York City teacher ever inducted. Wow. So that was that was an honor. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. We congratulate you and thank you for all that you do. Well, thank you. Yeah, and all that you continue course, to do, you know. Well, I retired in 2016, but then in March 2021, I had open heart surgery. Yeah. And after coming out, out of a one-month coma after that operation and being wheelchair-bound, I spent two years in rehab, and this past March, I moved to this senior living facility called Kate House. Yeah. And within a month of moving in, I created this class club, which... I found as a means of teaching the residents there, the senior residents, how to get along better with their neighbors <laughs> while navigating their own challenges about getting older, both yeah, physically yeah. and emotionally. Well, you don't only continue to uh, spread the love this way, but all the seeds that you planted in the early days in the high school, you know, I'm sure the word has spread across okay. to all the high schools and still continues yes. to this day because those kids that you spoke to, those students went off to work in other places like in, uh, like you mentioned before, like in hospitals and that work that you, the seed that you planted, the work that you started at the beginning still evolves today because of that what you've done. That is my legacy. Yeah. That's yeah. my legacy. Yes. And, and now you're working at Kate House, right? Right. And, and you're doing some wonderful things over there too. So hey, it doesn't stop. It does. Your no. legacy is is wide. It, it, it you know, it's it, it's good. you're going to be remembered for a lot of the things that you have done and continue to do today. And what is this well, picture here? I, you're, you're sitting with a group of uh, youngsters. Okay, this is a picture. We brought a group of third graders from PS 340 to Kate House to interact with the senior citizens. Oh, the holiday gathering, right? Yeah. So a holiday to gathering. So there you see them singing together, holiday carols, and they played games and had a lot of fun. There's another picture of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, those actually those same children are coming back next week for a combination Valentine Easter party because the Valentine party we had scheduled got canceled because of the snow a couple of weeks ago. How important but, uh, is that? And there uh, I am in Santa Claus. Yeah. How important is that kindness club that uh, you put together, just to keep people in love and in this circle of of love that you uh, that you brought to the Kate House. Well, you know, I I turn on the news every day, and I'm I'm somewhat depressed when I watch the news and see how many instances there are where kindness could have alleviated a situation or a tragedy in some cases. So to do it on this level with the seniors, to bring in the children and have their share, they share in it, I think the, 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 the message of kindness is certainly something we need nowadays, yeah. without doubt. And I'm sure you were, you were on before and you spoke to Gary Axelbank about it. And uh, he knows about, a lot of us here know about the great work that you continue to do in our community. And we thank and praise well, Gary you is that. a friend of mine for over 25, well, 45 years, I think it is now. Yeah. Well, two, two great people together, you and Gary. What? Yes. We're an unstoppable team, the dynamic duo. That's right. 
And we're all doing it together now. It's a circle of love moving together in the same direction for a common cause. And we thank you for you it. You bet. Yeah. You bet. Where thank can you. we go to find more about what you're doing? And do you have anything coming well, up uh, that we should know about that we can go out and cover? Yeah, actually, um, one of my former students, uh, her name is Tiffany Tizell. She uh, performed a concert here a couple of weeks ago, and she's coming back on April 3rd. She's a fabulous R&B singer. And um, we also have the, um, a group called Sing With Sound, who are a R&B dance group who are gonna get the seniors up and dancing. And they, they were set up through Gary as well. They're coming on uh, March 12th. So um, those are things that are upcoming. I also have another school I'm trying to bring over to do a, an, intergen an intergenerational planting yeah. project in our garden here. So we'll see if that happens. That interaction is important also, the young learning from yes. the, uh, the elderly and elderly learning Without from the doubt. young. Yeah. You know, my only problem with this is I've been basically funding this all myself and unfortunately most of my income now is going for my health concerns yeah. because i i have a full-time aide who helps me and everything can so, money be sent to the kate house for this project well the thing is that a group of my former students did set up a gofundme on facebook which um is aimed at helping me continue doing the good works that I've been doing. And that can be found on Thomas Porton, my page on Facebook. We'll see if our producers can uh, post that up there too. Uh, yeah, and Facebook also anybody at Tom else. Porton. At Tom.Porton, well, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess it would work. And also my, my, um, Bronx Tom at AOL.com. Anybody who wants to know more directly from me can contact me. I'm basically a grassroots mm. uh, movement working here with the seniors, and we, we're trying to do good works, but it's, it's difficult. Well, Tom, we love you. Continue. Don't stop. Continue to get that circle well, of love stopping. out there and that circle of kindness. We like what Thank you're you doing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, I'll tell uh, Gary that uh, we spoke and that uh, you're a good guy. Good. He Thanks already a lot. knows. I know. <laughs> He's a good guy, too. You and go. you're a good guy. Well, thank you. All right. We're part of the Good okay. Guys Club. Yeah. All there right. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Tom Porton, founder of Kindness Club. Thank you so much, Tom. All right. We'll take a quick break right here. I've got more coming up next on Open. Sit back. Here we go. Kick off your shoes and do what you like. Don't hurt nobody.